Our guest today has used his time in public office well and productively to clearly establish himself as a symbol of efficiency and good government, improving citizen accessibility to city government has been our guest's hallmark in his administration of the clerk's office. <clears throat> Number one, he has increased and improved revenue collection. He works incredibly hard to make his office more user friendly. Equally important, he has used his office creatively to achieve well-regarded social reform. For example, he has championed consumer safety legislation child support enforcement, and a unique child safety program. Our guest today sponsored and passed a child support enforcement ordinance which empowers him to deny a business license to a deadbeat parent. If you're behind in your child support payments, no license to do business in Chicago. Our guest today was born and raised on the southwest side. He is a graduate of St. Lawrence High School and Lewis University in Lockport, graduating cum laude. He also was awarded a Juris Doctorate degree from Northern Illinois University. He and his wife Kathleen have two daughters, Jennifer and Nina, and twin sons, Bobby and Jack. Our guest today will be on the ballot Tuesday, February 25th, along with Mayor Daly and Judy Rice for City Treasurer. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the City Clerk of the City of Chicago, Jim Lasky. Jim. Good afternoon. First of all, I didn't know this was going to be televised. <laughs> Uh, it's certainly a pleasure uh, to be here this afternoon uh, to speak to uh, the City Club of Chicago. Um, I have a standing line, I always say, that the office of the City Clerk is the best kept secret in Chicago, all the things we do. But I'm here to tell you, I don't want you to keep that secret anymore. So everything I'm going to talk about, about my office, where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going, I'd like you to, to spread that word out there. Um, when I campaigned for the office eight years ago, and there was talk back then about abolishing the city clerk's office, I said, trust me, if Jim Lasky gets elected city clerk, we will use this office. And uh, over the uh, past eight years, we've tried to uh, you know, provide a more efficient, progressive, and customer-friendly uh, office. Um, I was uh, on... Uh, a show, WLS, uh, Gary Meyer and Roe Khan. I think you're familiar with those two gentlemen. And uh, uh, we were talking about some of the things I do with the office, and Gary Meyer says, you know, there's this deep, deep fear about going to City Hall in Chicago. He says, you open up the doors in City Hall, and you feel like it's Alice in Wonderland. You fall down this deep, dark hole for four days. You come out dis disorientated, disorientated, and your clothes are all messed up. He says, you can't accomplish anything. <laughs> So I said, Gary, trust me, I'm going to do things with this office that will make it, you know, more consumer friendly. Uh, I would like to start off by talking about, you know, a few of uh, my initiatives. Uh, and one of the, uh, the first things I want to talk about is my collaborations with other uh, offices, both statewide and, uh, and countywide. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that in the year 2000, I entered an intergovernmental agreement with Secretary of State Jesse White, where Jesse White and I uh, share information and we uh, started a one-stop shopping program where Jesse White's uh, uh, employees come to work in my office and they sell the state uh, license plate stickers and, they, uh, and we do all the renewals for the Secretary of State's office in my office. And in turn, I send my employees to various Secretary of State facilities on a full-time basis and sell the vehicle stickers and the residential permit parking uh, uh, stickers. Uh, we have uh, offices now at 99th and King Drive, uh, Elston Avenue on the north side, and the State of Illinois building. 
And last year alone, uh, my office generated out of Jesse White's office $2 million out of 99th and King, 2.5 out of Elston Avenue, and another million dollars out of the State of Illinois building, in addition to what we generate at City Hall. Um, we also have been donated from Jesse White laptop computers, which we use to actively pursue sticker scoff laws. So uh, if my investigators go on the street, we have a laptop, and they can punch in the registration of the, of the plate, and we can determine if that person lives in the city of Chicago, and if they don't have a sticker, they would get a, uh, a, a ticket. I also have an agreement with uh, the state treasurer, Judy Bartopinka, where she has uh, been gracious enough to provide her staff and her computer equipment to set up the unclaimed, uh, the cash to dash program, the unclaimed assets. So if you come into my office, not only can you, can you take care of your state uh, license plates, you can go and uh, give them your name, the state treasurer's office, and they can determine if you have any unclaimed assets that are owed to you in the state of Illinois. Uh, in addition, we are working very closely with uh, Cook County. And one of the things I uh, do, uh, I say this unfortunately, is I issue and sell dog licenses. And, uh, and that's an issue that has become very, very uh, noteworthy over the last you know, few months with, with all the attacks with, uh, you know, with dogs, and we're trying to uh, increase our revenues with the dog licenses. Unfortunately, the, you know, our computer software is not up to date, and we're now working with the Cook County Animal Control to work in conjunction with them, because when a dog gets a uh, rabies shot in, this, in, the, uh, in Cook County, they are registered with the county, but we don't have that information, so now we're working to share that information with the county so if someone gets a, their dog gets a rabies shot, we will get that information and then we can go after those individuals to get a dog license in the city of Chicago. We're working very closely with the vets on this and in the past year we've doubled our fees in uh, revenues for the dog license program in the city of Chicago. Uh, and that's a program we will continue to work with the county on. Uh, every year I work with the aldermen and uh, the, the past year we teamed up with 45 aldermen out of the 50 to sell vehicle stickers out of their aldermanic offices. And uh, that generated another uh, $4 million uh, in revenues out of those aldermanic offices. In addition, I have a satellite office on the far southwest side of Chicago around Midway Airport. Um, that office is a full-time office, and we've generated last year $3 million out of that office in revenues. Um, I am currently exploring a partnership agreement with uh, utility companies, ComEd, People's Gas, where they would come into our office and we would allow people to come and pay their electric bills, their gas bills, and, uh, and any other bills they could pay there, along with the normal practices of you know, buying your vehicle sticker and, and other things. So what we're trying to do is you know, make it more customer friendly and provide more access for the taxpayers of the city of Chicago. Uh, in whole, I've, each year, well last year, for example, I generated out of the city clerk's office $91 million for the, uh, the coffers of the city of Chicago, which I think is you know, uh, uh, quite a bit of money. Uh, but we're going to continue to work at, on, on that issue. Uh, also, I want to talk about some legislative uh, initiatives. Uh, I think I'm the first city clerk in the history of the city to introduce legislation. And uh, one of the uh, uh, initiatives that I introduced a couple years ago, which Jay alluded to, was the child support uh, enforcement ordinance. Um, that I issue 100,000 business licenses each and every year throughout the city of Chicago. And this legislation allows for the city of Chicago to put a hold on anyone who does business in the city of Chicago, who has a business license, who is in arrears in child support. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a gentleman, I should say, I had a young lady call me last year to congratulate me on the ordinance. She said that uh, her ex-husband does business in the city of Chicago. He makes over $1 million a year, and yet he was in arrears uh, for $40,000 in child support for his children. Well, guess what? We put a hold on his business license, and he started making payments, and uh, you know, then we rein reinstated his business license. The first year alone with this program, there was $1 million that was generated to families in back child support through this ordinance, which I'm very proud of. Another piece of legislation, piece of legislation uh, 
that I was proud of, and I think uh, Bill Cameron knows this very well, is the indebtedness program for city employees. It wasn't the most popular thing at the time. A couple years ago, uh, we were talking about uh, raising taxes and doing some other things, and I said, well, let's crack down on the people who owe us money. Let's collect the money that's owed to us before we start raising taxes. So I did a little research, and I started looking at city employees who haven't bought their vehicle stickers or paid their water bills or paid their parking tickets. So I did a little research on that, and my initial research indicated there was at least $1 million out there. Well, after that story broke, uh, everybody was scrambling around, and when we, when we finished, uh, and we went after all the city employees, and we went after park district employees, CTA employees, we generated approximately $9 million that year in uncollected revenues for the city of Chicago. In addition, I, I have a, uh, a city uh, clerk website, and I'm going to advertise that today. It's www.shycityclerk.com. And over the past year, I, I've had over 150,000 hits on it. And uh, one of the most visited sites on my website is Find Your Alderman. You can, <coughs> this is a true story now, you can actually punch up your address, or approximately where you live with some busy streets, and it'll show you what ward you live in, who your alderman is, phone numbers, and other biographical information about your alderman. And uh, like I said, with 150,000 hits, that one is the most visited. I also have a uh, special, special projects division which I offer free services, and I, I, uh, I mean free services to the uh, citizens of Chicago. <coughs> Excuse me. In 1997, I started what I called the Kids ID Program. Um, it's, wait, I think I have something with me. The Kids ID, it's a, like a credit card. And what we did was we take the photograph of the child, and we have an inkless fingerprint on the back. And in the event the child becomes missing, uh, we can get a phone call. We store the biographical information and this information. And as you well know, in a case of an abduction or a missing child, the first 24 to 48 hours are important. If we get the phone call, we can send the photo, the fingerprint, and all other information to any law enforcement jurisdiction in the country within a matter of minutes. In the past four years, we've ID'd almost 75,000 children in the city of Chicago, free of charge. <clears throat> Two years ago, I started my senior medical ID program for senior citizens across the city of Chicago. Same kind of idea with uh, the card. And on the back of the, we have the senior's picture, and on the back of the card, we put medical conditions. So if uh, a senior citizen has high blood pressure, has a heart condition, their blood type, we'll put the doctor's name on there, insurance information, and also an emergency contact number. In the past two years, we've done over 25,000 senior citizens in the city of Chicago. Just uh, two months ago, there was a senior who got her ID taken in our office, and uh, she was suffering from a form of Alzheimer's. <clears throat> and uh, she ended up hopping on a bus and ending up in Texas. And uh, in Texas, she was on another bus, and she tried to jump off the bus, and uh, uh, some people grabbed her. And all the information, the only information she had on her was a senior medical ID card. So the Texas authorities contacted us, and we were able to reunite her with her family back in Chicago. We also had a case where there was a, uh, a senior citizen on the southwest side who was involved in a car accident. And uh, in the car accident, she hit her head on the windshield and was uh, disoriented. The paramedics came, and... Uh, they found the medical ID card on her, and they found out she had a high blood pressure and a couple other things that were wrong with her, so they were able to treat her accordingly based upon that information. So, you know, that program has been very successful. We also established a Chicago medical ID card for disabled people across the city of Chicago. Same concept, that kind of information. Uh, we also work very closely with the Department of Health, and each and every year I provide free immunization shots for children. Uh, each year we do approximately 15 to 20,000 children in the city of Chicago free immunization shots before school. And if you think about it, uh, the cost of a shot, I know when my twins uh, last year I had to take them for their vaccinations, uh, they each had to get three shots each at $90 a piece. So, you know, figure out the math, uh, this is free of charge. We also provide free flu shots for senior citizens. 
and each and every year we uh, vaccinate over 10,000 senior citizens across the city of Chicago. Um, in addition, uh, two years ago I started a passport service. Um, we have now become the second largest passport agency in the Chicagoland area. Only the federal building does more passports than my office. Um, we have done, processed in the last two years, 36,000 passports. And uh, have generated, by selling the passports, an additional $500,000 for the city of Chicago by us, by us processing the passport program. Another secret of my office is the, uh, the claims. Now, if you're driving down the street in the city of Chicago and you hit a pothole that should have been fixed by the city of Chicago, and it's determined it was the city's negligence, you can file a claim with the city clerk's office. If you have a business and during a snowstorm, they're snow plowing the streets and they plow up the snow and they break your windows of your business, you can come into my office and file a claim against the city of Chicago. I introduced that at the, at the next city council meeting and then sent to the finance committee for determination. Uh, just another thing that the city clerk's office does. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition, uh, for the last eight years, I've had a vehicle sticker design contest for our, for our high school students. And each year, your vehicle sticker is designed by a high school student, and uh, uh, that program has been very, very successful. And we've had some very, very talented high school students. And uh, this year, I also started an essay contest for our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students uh, to talk about Chicago heroes based upon 9-11. And uh, uh, the first place student gets their essay published in a major newspaper, I give that student a $1,000 savings bond. Uh, so that has been very, very successful. Uh, so over the years, the past seven or eight years, my office, the city clerk's office, we've tried to expand and do a number of different things that benefit the young people of our city, the senior citizens, and the average taxpayer in this city, and in turn generate additional revenues for Chicago. Um, today, I want to announce a new initiative, and uh, I'm going to share it with you first before I give it to the press, except for Bill Cameron. Today, I'm announcing that I, along with Secretary of State Jesse White, and State Representative Dan Burke have joined forces in trying to put an end to the long-standing fraudulent practice that allows Chicago motorists to register their vehicles to a suburban address and yet live in a city in order to avoid paying uh, and lessen the amount they pay for vehicle stickers and car insurance. Uh, as I am speaking, letters are being sent to the top insurance companies in the state of Illinois seeking their participation in this measure. Ultimately, we hope to close this loophole by way of legislation. One insurance carrier who uh, wants to remain anonymous has indicated to me that he believes that somewhere between 5 to 10 percent of all motorists in the city of Chicago do not live where their vehicles are registered. In these hard economic times, such a practice deprives Chicago of much needed revenue. Eventually, I want to have a number crunching session with the major insurance companies, myself, Secretary of State White, and Representative Burke, to first, number one, determine how many people participate in such fraud, two, how much money is lost, and three, what can be done to bring about equity, not only for honest Chicago motorists, but all honest motorists in Illinois. Besides the city sticker and insurance revenue being lost, there are some other concerns. One, Chicago city, a Chicago city tax is not being paid. If a Chicago resident buys a vehicle anywhere in the state of Illinois, they must pay a 1% city tax. However, if you fraudulently register, say you live somewhere else, you avoid paying that 1% tax. We also believe that insurance rates can possibly be lowered in the city of Chicago if everyone pays their fair share in the city. Three, your state, of Illinois, your state of Illinois license plate is registered where you say you live. Unfortunately, people are fraudulently saying they live somewhere else. And for a lot of safety issues and law enforcement issues, it's important 
that uh, we crack down on that. And there's possible insurance fraud here by signing on a line that states everything on this application is true, but you register your car somewhere else. For example, now, the co a cost of a vehicle sticker in the city of Chicago is $75. A random survey of 25 suburbs in the Chicagoland area showed that cost for a vehicle sticker being from a zero cost to one ex no, no more exceeding $45. So, you know, the city of Chicago is losing substantial money. Um, I use an example of a friend of mine who, who drives a 1996 Toyota SUV in Chicago. His monthly premium is $964. That same vehicle, if registered in Schaumburg, would be $212 less per year. The cost of a vehicle sticker in Schaumburg is $17. The cost of one in Chicago is $75. So using the simple math, that individual would save anywhere between $300 and $400 a year by fraudulently, fraudulently registering their vehicle in a, in a neighboring suburb. The financial loss is, a, is astounding. Um, so over the next month or two, Secretary of State White, myself, and State Representative Dan Burke will be sitting down with the major insurance companies to discuss this issue and to come up with a, a reasonable solution and possibly legislation that would fine, and, uh, fine people who, 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 uh, who fraudulently register their cars in other locations. Um, I have a little note here that says, when you close, you should say why you should be reelected. Uh, uh, I've always said one thing. I'm, I'm only as good as the people I surround myself with. And I, I've been very lucky and blessed to have some great people around me. And I have uh, my chief of staff here, who uh, I call AKA Rod Blagojevich, uh, Joe Panaris. and my lovely press secretary who keeps me hopping all over, Val Landon. I truly enjoy what I'm doing, and um, I've been city clerk now for eight years, and prior to that I served four and a half years as alderman in the 23rd Ward, uh, right around Midway Airport. And, and over those 12 years, I've tried to stand up for taxpayers, and I've tried to stand up for the average person. And uh, sometimes my positions always haven't been popular, but I've always done it in the best interest of taxpayers. And uh, if that means anything, hopefully, you know, I've done a good job. And uh, we'll let the, uh, the voters on February 25th decide if I uh, can get another four, four years as city clerk. I love the job. It's great to be in the city of Chicago, and it's great to serve in, in that position. And God willing, I'll, I'll do that again for another four years. And, uh, so again, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I'll take any questions you may have. Thank you. Why don't we just stand up and, uh, or is there a microphone? You need a microphone? If you have a question, go to the microphone over there. And Come on, Grant, you could go, go first. It's always good to have somebody in the city clerk's job that only wants four more years. Some city clerks have done better than that. <laughs> I could hear you. Speak loud, Grant. I will. Thank you. Uh, hey, I want to make a comment and a question to you about what you just did. Oh, first of all, that's great that you're going to do that. To the Secretary, because there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people in the middle of the city who look at a lot of Michigan, Wisconsin sites, a lot of vehicles are registered to summer homes, and people don't pay the rates for insurance. The other thing, though, is Aside from the sales of vehicles, we are considered leases too because we're losing six percent on a monthly basis. I know that because I pay the lease tax, so you're losing that. And the other thing that we have to know about would be car dealers or car dealers oh, too. And that's why we're going to have this meeting with the major insurance companies because some good points. We, we are going to bring the car dealerships into this, and uh, and we're also going to bring in uh, you know a number of other people to sit down and discuss. You know. Absolutely, 
And again, we have to start with the major ins insurance companies and sit down and pick their brain and ask them. In the past, we haven't had a lot of cooperation from them. And now with the Secretary of State, Jesse White, supporting this you know, initiative to sit down with them, and, uh, and a state representative who is willing to introduce legislation to crack down on this, you know, I think we can, we'll hopefully get some cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things my office does is, is we produce a lot of publications, and we have a publication called an owner's manual where we have a street guide in there uh, and, and, and uh, information about the city clerk's office, important phone numbers. Uh, we also have a student guide for, for young people about the history of Chicago. We also have a senior guide, helpful hints for seniors on how they can get benefits from the city of Chicago. Those kind of publications, if we get those out, you know, inform people about the various programs. And we've probably uh, given out over a million uh, owner's manuals already in the city of Chicago. And again, I, I pass those out at the aldermanic office. Uh, you know, I think the, the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce has taken a number of those manuals and, and information packets. And that's how we help, is by getting that information out and letting people know these programs and what the responsibilities are. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. The Chicago. Uh, well, we have we both we have both a senior medical ID card and a Chicago medical ID card, so it doesn't matter about the age. So anybody can participate in that. And on that card, like I said earlier, it has all the important information. You know, a doctor's name, medical conditions, all that all that stuff. And trust me, that medical ID can save someone's life. www. Dot shycityclerk.com all one word right Joe? <laughs> you didn't think you get a quiz did you? Uh, <laughs> any other questions for City Clerk Lasky? Any more tributes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I appreciate so the time and thank you. What we're about to give you could pass any ethic ordinance now given uh, or about to be uh, constructed. Uh, first, a one-year membership gym in the uh, City Club of Chicago, signed by Jay Doherty and Tom Roser. That is Tom Roser's signature. Sometimes it's tough to read. Of course, if you write like Tom Roser, you want to make your signature tough to read. And the incredible City Club mug. Thank you. And I have one of these. You saw it in my office. I'll yes, have a second now, one now. Now you have two of them. Uh, and there's an old joke by Bathhouse John Coughlin, I won't go into it. On behalf of the City Club, thank you for being here. <laughs> Dismissed.